Hey guys, Scott here, and you might have noticed in the past couple of weeks of my videos, if I've had my browser open for any B-roll or anything like that, there was this thread bookmarked, and it's because I wanted to go back to it whenever there was like a slow DVD day, and we got one of those right now, so I figured I would go over this with you guys. It was a thread on Reddit where people just made suggestions for new iridescent add-ons for killers, and I remember reading these a couple months ago and thinking a lot of them were actually pretty interesting. Some were just really funny, and some were just genuinely useful and good. And I just wanted to go over some creative space that the community has had. And uh, we'll just go from there. Some of them are not really like super funny or interesting. They're just thematic and useful. Like this first one, this is pretty much just a pyramid head add-on where all survivors would begin the trial torment. They'd be iridescent. And I think that's honestly perfect for an iridescent add-on. Maybe purple if you wanted to go that way as well. But that sort of fits the theme. Honestly, the description is very on brand with the uh, plot of the whole game too. So it actually makes a lot of sense. And it is one of those things where it's not overpowered, but it is extremely useful because being able to save time on those first four hooks um, and just being able to instantly cage them and have, without having to like pass them into your torment. I think something like that is strong, not overpowered. It's very fitting. It, it's just overall a cool design and is better than basically every single add-on that Pyramid Head has other than the range add-ons, which are admittedly quite useful. <clears throat> I don't know why Pyramid Head has been so scuffed with add-ons, but stuff like this would be very, very cool. I would still love to see uh, Pyramid Head get something else. This one's funny. Hellshire Iron. Whenever you shoot your spear with Deathslinger, if it reaches the max range of 18 meters, the chain breaks off and the spear goes an additional 10 meters, instantly putting survivor and hits into the mending state. So technically, you'd be able to sh shoot a shot 28 meters, but you wouldn't be able to reel them in because the chain would be broken. However, it would just instantly put them into mending. Now, obviously, on people that are already injured, it won't actually do anything. It'll just put them into mending from injured. Not a big deal. Um, but I do think just for the sheer shock value, it's not overpowered. And it's honestly funny being able to get a Deathslinger snipe as if it was a Hunter snipe, which is very hard to do, by the way. This wouldn't be overpowered because that, that chain is much smaller than a Hunter's hatchet. So it would be very hard to hit. And if you got it, it would be like a holy shit shot. So I think that would be pretty sweet. Um... In Nightfall, entering and exiting a locker is silent, and for the next 20 seconds, you make no sound. This is for the Dredge, and I would love to see something like this, because I'm of the opinion that Dredge's Nightfall is not scary enough whatsoever. I understand for newer players that don't know map environments and stuff like that, it can be a little frightening, and I get that, so that's probably why they haven't done anything like this. But as someone that's played the game for a while, I don't really care about Nightfall. Dredge is so incredibly loud during Nightfall that I'm not scared. In fact, sometimes when there's nightfall, if I'm getting chased by a dredge, it's easier to locate exactly where he is because the distance is blacked out. So you just focus on basically the sound and you can actually track him through walls directly. So with this, if you actually interacted with a locker in nightfall, which is what you're supposed to be doing, you would make no sound. You wouldn't sound like a giant vacuum cleaner just going through the environment. And that would actually make dredge scary for once. That would actually be terrifying. Instead of hearing the coming up he would just be behind you and uh exiting the locker would be sound as well that would be one of the actually truly scary killers in the game and i honestly am all for having more of that in the game so i think that will be very very cool big iridescent combat straps increases the crouch transitioning speed by 20 percent crouch movement speed by 10 percent decreases the time it takes to charge an ambush by 25 and removes the roar of the dash or delays it now, to compensate, it would have reduced the available bear traps by two. And that's honestly pretty consistent with behavior's design. Usually when you have something that grossly buffs a power like that, <clears throat> it has some type of detriment as well. And I think that makes a lot of sense because this is basically pushing it more towards a chase pig and not a game delay with bear traps pig. And so you would still have two bear traps for some game delay, but your actual crouch mechanic would be significantly better. And you would be able to combo that with the other add-ons um, and have a actual chase power, <clears throat> which I think could actually be pretty interesting, uh, for, <clears throat> oh, sorry, pig in general. And that's how I love playing pig. I don't like doing, you know, the whole face, the darkness totem guard build. When you have double created gears, you make people's head pops by camping to the, I just hate doing that stuff. I actually really like her chase power. Just kind of like, I enjoy Wraith's chase power as well. Like being able to use the windstorm boost to go around loops and swing really fast. I would love to see if pig could have a more, uh, combat centric style like that you could even make an argument that all this shit should be base kit because big is not a good killer um but i would very much take the uh the trade that this could be an add-on that buffs all aspects of her kit like that i think that'd be really good <clears throat> but yeah even a lot of people agree this could just be something that was more of a, a base kit but 
I would still love to have more of a chase centric pig as well. This one is good. Broken escape key, a key from a keyboard Adriana accidentally broke during one of her anime watching marathons. Survivors cannot disconnect by any means, and it will be an add on for Skull Merchant. <laughs> to be fair, this was months ago when 3 Gen Merchant was still a thing, so I, I still hate Skull Merchant, so that's still actually hilarious to me. Iridescent Grease for Pyramid Head. You gain the ability to nod with your helmet on. That's just too strong. It, that will be far too powerful. We already have the absolute top tier contenders for nodding. Um, Dredge and uh, Nurse and uh, Alien. They're all already top tier. Pyramid Head would un undoubtedly be the reigning champ. That would make him too strong. Okay, this one is just stupid. <laughs> Iridescent Backstage Pass. The main event can now be kept until you need it. And all survivors within 8 meters of the Trickster during main event will have their aura shown. It's an interesting idea, but it's too strong, in my opinion. The reason you can't allow something like that is because people will just use it to proxy camp. They'll save it. As soon as they see someone going for the save, they will just laser that person down before they can even get the save off. And you basically just have a new Leatherface camping scenario. You might just go, but Leatherface can do that. Yeah, but the fact that Leatherface can do that is also bad. We need to fix that, too. We shouldn't be introducing more of that. I think this would be okay, but they would have to do a couple of things. They would have to drastically shorten the duration of main event by, like, 50%. So you got maybe like, you know, three seconds of brrrr, but you couldn't down an entire team trying to get a save or something like that. So I think being able to save mid event would be an extremely powerful effect, but it would need to be mitigated by the fact that it's so powerful. You can't just let it last the same amount of time and also see everybody nearby at the same time. That would be a little too strong. Very cool description on that, though. Huntress's last hatchet is a bomb. Huntress's last hatchet is a bomb and kills any survivors. Okay. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> this is where we're starting to get into the, uh, the memes. The start of the match, a loud voice can be heard by all survivors screaming, take your try-hard pants off. It's just us, the twins. Survivors also gain access to a special emote that allows them to respond with just who. <laughs> poor twin, poor Pixel and Linksy and, like, one other guy. That's it. That's all the, uh, it's just all the twin <laughs> names. Samurai Edge Pistol. I, God, I want this. So bad. Disables the ability to throw survivors with virulent bound. This would be for Wesker. The virulent bound extension lasts until a surface is collided with. Recovering from slamming survivors increased by 0.5 seconds. So basically what this would do is you don't throw survivors anymore. You just charge them until you hit a wall. So effectively you could be on Rotten Fields or Midwitch and just charge them across the entire map. And I, it wouldn't even be better than just throwing them and downing them. It would just be so goddamn funny that I think this would absolutely be worth adding to the game. It wouldn't be overpowered. It would just be hilarious overall. There's even a built-in count, like a, a standard behavior side nerf with it where the recovery would have increased by 0.5 seconds. So it actually, it would be a little bit of a detriment, but it would ensure you always hit a wall. And I would basically only run farm maps or midwitch and just, 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 just charge people across the entire wall. That would be uh, honestly amazing. Alternatively, yes, you could also make it so you throw people until they hit a wall. <laughs> just something stupid like that. It's one of my favorite things about Wesker. Just how insanely silly some of the throws and charges are. That's one of my favorite things about him. Improvised Cattle Prod. This is for Xenomorph. The Xenomorph's detection of footprints affects the entire map. Survivors within 10 meters of a control station generate footprints even when standing still. That'd be cool. I think the whole footprints thing is a very underutilized tool of the Xenomorph. For those that don't know, if you're in the tunnels and someone is relatively close to you under the tunnels, you'll see little, um, it almost like water droplets of orange footprints. Uh, and it lets you know exactly where people are. But like I said, it's very situational. You have to be directly under them and you have to be paying attention to being right above you. So it's not something even people are aware of. So making that a more core component to the actual ability itself and then changing his power to be more based on that location would be really, really cool. I think that was awesome. Iridescent armor plate. If the knight is stunned by any means and there's no guard actively patrolling or hunting performing a guard breaking action, the survivor who performed the stun is automatically locked into hunt by the next guard within the knight's rotation. Hmm. I don't really think that would be overpowered. I think that would just be... It would kind of just basically do what the knight already does. I can't even see how that would be super useful. You get a stun, it locks on, it goes, Err, but the, the knight is stunned and... During that time, the survivor is doing the only correct counterplay tonight, which is holding W in the opposite direction. So the knight doesn't catch up. The guard doesn't catch up. Unless you're in a corner of the map, it saves you the three seconds. I guess that maybe that would be, would be for if you're in a corner of the map when you're getting stunned and seven having to get unstunned and then shooting your guard around to the side and then chasing him the other side. It would just do that for you. So I don't really think that'd be overpowered. It's a cool idea. I'd honestly be fine with that. 
Teleporting into and exiting a locker is now completely silent. Lockers can no longer be teleported to you using the gloaming, only entering another locker manually. That's an interesting idea, too. Making the lockers far more stealthy, but instead the actual dredge has to physically walk to lockers to teleport into them. A lot of people don't know that dredge can manually walk into lockers. I don't know why you ever would, because you can teleport there, but it is a feature that he has that no one really ever uses. So that'd be cool to make that a more central component. And this would be like a more common add-on than the iridescent one we uh, saw earlier. Because, yeah, the lockers being that loud makes it so there's no stealth potential with the dredge at all. But I do think that would be pretty cool. Honestly, what I would do with this add-on as well is make it so you had three seconds of stealth or something coming out of the locker as well. I think that'd be really neat. Or maybe just make it the more quiet locker sound. Like when you do a slow vault into a locker, it just goes like, ee! It's like, you can still hear something, but you have to be paying attention to it. I think something like that would be very interesting. But that is a pretty interesting idea. Uh, what else we got? Iridescent biologic sample for uh, Singularity. You can directly slipstream survivors by shooting them. You can no longer place your biopods around the environment. Survivors no longer infect each other with slipstream. So basically what this does is make him into a solely chase-based killer. I think this is fine for an iridescent atom because what iridescent atoms are supposed to do are not make them overwhelmingly broken. They're supposed to change the base gameplay of the killer. I actually think this would make the killer slightly weaker, but also it would make the skill floor of the killer a lot lower so it would be a lot easier to get into the killer with this type of add-on because you wouldn't have to worry about because i mean singularity is complicated you gotta see where your target is find an object that has a line of sight to that person aim to that thing shoot to that thing switch to that thing switch the camera to that person track that person switch back to you and remember where all of you are in this exact same time so for a lot of people especially if you're on console doing that rapid movement on sticks is really tough so doing something like this, which would allow you to circumvent the surveillance portion of his power and just go surely into chase, I think would be completely fine. I do think it would make him slightly weaker because once you do get good at that, it's much better having high vantage points to hit behind walls and you can even set webs up so you don't even have line of sight and you can still teleport to him. And that's when Singularity feels the absolute best when they're running through your web of drones or your you know cameras and you're just teleporting to them even though he can't see you anymore. That is when Dredge feels awesome. Or not Dredge, uh, Singularity. And I think that would be very cool. Iridescent Electrode. Lose the ability to use Static Blast. You always see the aura of Doctor's illusionary clones. While within 20 meters of a clone, press the secondary ability button to teleport to the clone, which takes 0.3 seconds. So this is that whole concept. I'm sure you've seen that build before where people run Insidious on Doctor and pretend to be one of the illusions that appears when you have Madness and then it's actually the real Doctor. That would basically be this. You would not be able to Static Blast anymore, so getting people into Madness to make those illusions appear would take longer because you'd have to manually shock them rather than just get everyone uh, madness with static blast. But this would give the doctor some form of map control and you could essentially see where anyone is in the map and then go to them at the same time. There would be a bit of a delay before doing it, but you would actually have to be very wary as a survivor of the doctor illusions instead of just ignoring them entirely. And I think that would be a pretty interesting build for a pretty fair trade-off of losing the location-based information you get from shocking. You get the occasional random information because the illusions always appear looking at survivors so you know there's a survivor relatively nearby and so this would trade that information for this information and give them a new form of map control very interesting those are the kinds of ideas i like for iridescent add-ons that change things iridescent vcr allows sadako to phase through objects while demanifest it increases the time required to demanifest by 35 percent i'm assuming this means like pallets and windows and things like that not actual walls because then you'd have a whole mess of bugs and stuff like that <clears throat> I think this is okay. I would love to see that type of ability be possible. It would make sense consider she is literally demanifested. She shouldn't be still blocked by wooden pallets and stuff like that. It doesn't make any sense. So this would make her power actually very strong at anti-loop, but only on long loops. Because if it was a short loop, if you were demanifesting, um, or rather, yeah, if, if you were trying to like, she's a hit through that, if it was a short loop, they would be around the loop by the time you could actually hit them again. So it wouldn't really accomplish too much there. But if it's one of the longer loops, it takes them just long enough to get around it once to where you might actually catch up and that would make it actually very useful. So there'd be a certain amount of times that would be, um, you know, useful, but you'd have to be smart with it. And I think that would be uh, pretty interesting. Iridescent Horn with Knight. Increases duration of a hunt by 50%. Increases the movement speed of each knight by 0.3 meters a second. Decreases the knight's movement speed by 0.3 meters a second. So that is a very different play style that I don't think will really change too much. It will allow the guards to actually potentially hit people when they normally would, 
but the knight himself would be near useless in a chase, which would basically just force the killer into doing more of that. Put the guard on one side, the knight chases on the other. It doesn't matter how slow the, the knight is. If the guard is faster in that differential and it's the same speed difference, they're still going to meet at the same spot at the same time, and you're still going to get the hit in the exact same way. So I could see this being interesting for having more of a macro play style and making your guards do other things. But the problem is, if your guards are doing other things and you're chasing someone when you're significantly slower, you're going to feel like shit. So I'm okay with this as an iridescent, but I don't think it would actually be super good. Um, that would be uh, something that would probably make them actually a little bit worse. For us, three pig players. Reduces traps by one once a survivor is in the interstate state after a trap has been placed. The timer starts immediately. Increase the minimum box search is required by one. That would be, yeah, I was about to say, that would be way, way too strong at the end of the game. It's a funny idea, but that would be way too strong. It would basically ensure that guy died unless everybody escaped and then they got the hatch. Because, yeah, that, that would be way too strong. I don't think that would be uh, anything crazy. Anyway, um, I I'm going to link this thread in the uh, description because, I don't know, I just found this very entertaining laying in bed one day. And I figured I would finally make a video about it during a relatively low amount of DVD news and interest. So uh, that's pretty much it. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for watching. And we'll see you next time.